So today we're gonna, I'm gonna do the presentation for the FCAT Science Training. All of you guys have your books and we're gonna go over the script um, at once we're done with the presentation and you guys have your PowerPoint that you guys can follow along. We are going to, we're gonna talk about the administration, the FCAT Science, that in our school is only for fifth grade. This is the book. Um, it doesn't have the updated version this year. It's green and you can see that the year is different for this school year. The days of the testing, it's, a, it's a given on a two day, um, between two days, May 2nd is the first session and then you have May 3rd, the second session. Any students that are absent will be from May 4th to the 5th. So the, if anybody does not come out that whole week, they won't be able to take the test. Um, for science fifth grade, it's paper based. It's the only test that fifth grade does take on paper. The sessions are two sessions long. Each session is 80 minutes. Um, there's a break during the 80 minutes. So after 40 minutes of testing, they'll take a short, quick minute break and then they'll continue for 40 minutes. Students that have extra time will obviously not be timed. Once the 80 minutes are up, if they need more additional time, they may have additional time as long as they have the accommodation to do it. Students that are tested, everyone in the school is tested. Every ESOL student, every ESE student, Obviously, those students are given accommodations, and every other kid uh, that does not have any accommodations does the test as well. Accommodations, there's the Appendix A that breaks down all the accommodations for you. The day of testing, you guys will receive uh, a spreadsheet that has all the accommodations that each student will have. The way that I like to do it when I uh, sit them down, I make sure that every student that has the same accommodation should be seated together so that it's easier for you to maneuver during the test. This is the same accommodation and all that will be given to you during the test. For paper-based tests, you will have a test book with the student's name already written on them that has to match the security number that's on the security checklist. And you have their answer book that that's what has the label. In fifth grade, you may not have a, a calculators during fifth grade or um, scientific, the periodic table. Uh, so the labels they've already provided for the students. The only thing I do want you to focus on is make sure that these five elements are correct. That their name is correct, their ID is correct, the district number, which is 5384, their school number, um, sorry, and the their grade level. Everything else, um, it's not a big deal if it's an issue, let me know and I can fix it on the system. But those are the five main things that do have to be correct on their uh, label. The state and district requirements is a form that you guys are gonna fill out at the end of the day and you're gonna sign basically saying that you will follow all uh, appropriate test security and you won't allow any test breaches to do and you want this to be as standardized as possible. So policies, again, you wanna make sure these certain things are completely forbidden during testing. You're not to read or view any passages or prompt. You, won't, uh, you can reveal it to the students ahead of time. You can explain, you can't copy anything that you see um, you can't copy student responses and so then go talk to it about a friend about what the students wrote about. It's extremely important that all, everything, all security is maintained before, during, and after testing. Under no circumstances during preparing all this stuff or, or returning are students allowed to do it. You have to pick up the material from each student yourself and not have them come and, pick, and give it to you. Um, school administrators and proctors who are going to fill out these forms, the same ones that I told you previously. Um, everyone, including me, any IT guy that goes into the room, we have to fill it out as well. In each testing room, we have to maintain a security lock like we've been doing for all the other testing that's posted on your door. Anybody that comes into your classroom has to <coughs> fill out that paper, put their time in and time out. You have to maintain the seating chart as well for each day administration for session one and session two. All the copies will be provided for you. Um, here are the procedures on how um, for the, once you get the materials, when you collect it, I will read the names to you and the numbers and you have to make sure that in the security log it matches. And there's a sample of the security checklist that's already all filled out for you ahead of time. Um, in the case that there's a hazardous material, a student bleeds on the book, a student throws up on the book, you call me and I'll do the necessary uh, steps in order to get you a new book and dispose of that book. Policies, anything that's missing, you report everything to me. When you sign out, make sure you're signing out and you're counting correctly because once you take it, you're liable for those tests. Once you have it, you better make sure that you bring me the same amount of tests with the same amount of names on the books. Anybody that needs to be invalidated because they're talking, they're standing up, they're doing what they're not supposed to be doing, you let me know before 
um, and then we'll we'll see the situation and we'll see what's the next steps that we have to take. Um, defective material, these are just again the steps that I have to take if we do have an instance with a defective item during your script, there's a, there's a part where the students have to flip through each page and see if there's any upside down pages or missing numbers. In the case that that happens, you let me know and I'll go from there. And I will provide you the new book with the correct label. Um, any questions? Really quickly, the last thing I want you to do is to open up your manual so that you can tap the pages that you're going to do your test on. You're gonna start in page 29. Page 29, before testing, is very important to look at numbers one, two, three, and four. It basically breaks down for you everything that you have to do before testing. You want to ensure that you already display the district name, the school name, the four-digit session one test group code. That test group code is given to you on your security checklist. You want to make sure all your signs are posted, the kids already have their number two pencils, and your room is free of aids. The email that I sent today clearly states, our rooms uh, should already, the testing locations need to have the desk in rows and everything covered as you see here. Um, in the script, the only things I do want you to notice in page 30, under the first save box, that tells you when to distribute the answer books. Session one, you're gonna distribute the answer books at one point in time and then your test books, you're gonna notice in page 31 at the top, that's when you distribute it. On the second session, that's when you can distribute them both at the same time. So when you pick up your bin, along with the treats and everything that are already there for the kids, you're going to notice that the test books and the answer books are separate. <coughs> After that first session, you can leave them inside each other. So for the second session, they're already together. When you turn it in after the second session, they're done for testing, they need to be separated because to package them, I need to package them separately so it's easier. And you always put them in the same order as a security log. Um, and every time you see an option for option A or option B or option A, B or C, we always do option A. So in page 30, we do option A because they already have the labels on it. And the only other place where you have to pick option A is also in page 30 at the bottom. It says um, option A or option B. It obviously would always be option A because they're writing their own name on, their, on the answer sheet. Um, and at the end in page 33 is also option A. So whenever you see the option of different letters, it's always A, B or A, B or C. It's always option A. Any questions so far? Okay, and the last session uh, for session two is in page 37. Again, it repeats everything to you. It tells you what to do before testing. We're saying everything. When you have to pick an option, you're gonna pick option A. In page 38, you can see that now it's different. It says distribute both the science test book and the answer book. That's why by that day, you're gonna, you'll have them inside of each other and you can turn them in. You can pass them out that easily. And the last thing I do wanna mention is in page 41, those teachers of you, I believe in fifth grade, we have two classrooms um, that have extended time with the East on ESC students. At the end of testing, you have to make sure that you put what accommodations that they use because we can provide everything to them, but they may not use it. You may give them extra time, but they will be finished before time is called, so you won't have to mark it. Whatever they do use, you have to make sure you mark it, okay? Um, and that's pretty much it for FCAT Science. Uh, everything is pretty self-explanatory. The day of the bin, all the snacks, the Ziploc bags for their cell phones, the little notepads for you to write their names, their pencils, everything will be provided at the end of testing. A fifth grade science that Wednesday, you guys may allow them to keep the pencils because they'll be done with testing. They'll be done. Any questions? That's it. Thank you very much for coming.